Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Xad Talk Show. Now let me get prepared. Go live. And if you are new here, just go to this website, uh, Xad Talk Show website, which is over here, and you will see a list of topics. And find the one that interests you. Then type in the comment box. Then we'll talk about that. So, you know, type the comment real time to,、uh, comment box. So let me get something to drink. This is my power drink, Rockstar. This is basically condensed, well, some kind of coffee, condensed coffee essence, you know, like Red Bull. Okay. Energize. And now, here is prune juice, hundred percent prune juice, one dollars each, cheap. So we're gonna talk about, you know. Let me know what you want to, what we're gonna talk about. We can talk about, in general, there's two diversions: tech, technical, or non-tech. Tech is like Emacs programming, programming languages, user interface design, programming language design, JavaScript,、uh, programming GoLang, and so on. That's tech, technical. Non-tech is You know anything non-technical?、Uh, you know interesting things happenings. So let me just begin by non-technical things.、Uh, okay. So you know again, you know what the topic is going to be is going to depend on depends on what you know what you guys want.、Uh, what you guys you know you guys take the direction. Like we have a chat, and that'll be fun. Okay, I, we have one guy here and、uh, say something. You know, just type in the chat bo-、uh, box. And today is the sixteenth. And let me get the talk. Okay, and let's see. Let's put this here.、Um, copy the path, new buffer, paste, make it into a link, shrink, make it one line.、Uh, Pick a topic and post in comment. Okay. Okay. Ah,、uh, wait, not here. Wait. Ah,、uh, well, okay. Paste it there, and actually, I need to paste it here. So what?、Uh, so yesterday we did the talk show where I talked about the well, the social justice. Uh, people and that's kind of sad, you know. I I was I was afraid Google is going to ban me.、Uh, and okay, since nobody is here yet, let me go to okay. So here is a page,、uh, Google do evil. You can just search for Xali Google do do evil and you'll find it. The, you know Google. So this page, I start to I begin to doc document. Of the many things that evil things Google is doing. For example, this this article is from today. Former Mozilla execute for, former Mozilla executive, Google has sabotaged Firefox for years. You know, so Google is doing. You know, Google Chrome team is doing evil things. You know, it,、um, to to make Firefox. You know, like. Underhand ta- tactics to make Firefox look bad.、Uh, so, so that's one example. You know, you can go read uh, read um, the article. Then here's another article from two days ago. Google AMP lowered our page speed, and there is no choice but to use it. So yeah, Google has been doing a lot of you know really bad evil things. Uh, so and I have been working on my JavaScript tutorial in the past month. So let me show you.、Uh, let's go to Emacs. Okay, close that. Bookmark. Jump to JavaScript website. 
show in browser so this is my local copy of my JavaScript in depth website so I have been working on this in the past week you know updating it I added the side panel here this is a great tutorial it's the best tutorial on the web okay you know one of the best among the top three I would say um, you know the among the one of the top three of all JavaScript uh, tutorials book in existence doesn't matter it's online or offline okay including Microsoft's including Mozilla's you know JavaScript reference including uh, whatever printed books okay of all of them I would claim that mine is the best among the top three okay so if you like it you know check it out Job, just search for JavaScript in depth Ksali, and uh, you know try to uh, learn it and if you like it put money in my pocket okay put to my patreon uh, PayPal and so on and you can also buy the whole tutorial offline you know you can read it offline uh, without any ads so this is kind of uh, comprehensive and I've read you know all the JavaScript specs uh, so actually so since there's you know uh, nobody is here yet one, one person you know uh, let me know what you want to you know type a question or anything comments or you know say hi so uh, since no one is here I let me work on something then uh, maybe So you can see this is a uh, SVG tutorial. Now if I go to my SVG tutorial, um, hold on a second. Let's copy that. Go to Emacs. Uh, wait. Copy that. Go to Emacs. Open the file, and uh, and show in browser. Okay. Now you see this one doesn't have the side box. However, if you go to my SVG tutorial here it is and you can see on the side panel you have the index you have SVG basics you have path SVG path uh, and other topics so for some reason that article article didn't have that so we gonna I'm going to need to add it so let's see uh, SVG animate tag Okay, so first of all, I need to uh, you know go to the diet directory and find out of all files in this directory. I want to find out which file does not have the the side panel. Uh, uh, so let's do that. So first of all, go to JavaScript in depth, uh, which is this one. Wait, I need to go to SVG. SVG open in browser so so the panel is go, is this one is this part so I'm going to search uh, let me go show that so I'm going to search uh, wait a minute I'm going to search this text for all files in this directory okay mx xa find count okay what search string so paste the search string enter and uh, what do I want to show so I want to show anything that is um, not one not equals to one okay show it So I got all these files, uh, quite a lot of files. Oh, that's actually too many. Um, because most of them are actually JavaScript. So my task is to find. So I copy everything new buffer paste select all sort it compact the empty space D that then go down all the way down uh, okay copy this line go to the top 
query replace paste the line replace by nothing for all okay then compact the line then we don't need this part we don't need that so now we have all the files basically now select all sort okay and now list all lines that whose file name contains SVG uh, list matching lines SVG oh so only actually three of them okay that's good copy it close close we don't need to save it uh, close that now actually okay so new buffer paste it I'm gonna open these files so uh, open it show in browser okay browser inline SV image hate weight scale versus quad browser inline SVG image okay I haven't seen this article for a long time this is very old article 2012 okay let's um, actually this is not part of the SVG tutorial um, so I'm not going to add SVG panels on the left so this is browser inline SVG image height weight scale scale versus crop okay I think it was a bug uh, IE9 yeah it's kind of a bug in IE9 so ignore this page now let's open this one show in browser canvas S versus SVG so this page is comparison of these two technologies now why why was it not uh, okay for some reason I don't have the panel so okay anyway copy the panel here copy go here go to the bottom then we want to replace this block by that now show in browser now we have the SVG navigation panel on the left that's good okay now one more file SVG animate tag so do the same thing let's go here go to the bottom uh, select it paste that's good show in browser that's good and now we just uh, upload to my browser go to eShell okay no wait close it close it we don't need it uh, no save go to eShell a brief interactive a brief okay our sync yes then it's uploaded to my browser I mean to my server okay so that's one task done uh, that's about Emacs I'm using Emacs okay what else so let's close wait uh, reopen SVG close 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 okay back to XA talk show now let's go back to SVG tutorial yeah okay what else to talk we got two person watching um, okay what else to talk about okay, okay let's talk about random then you know if you have a question comment post it you know I like to see your comments and I'm gonna talk about, I'm gonna talk random okay um, so SVG basic examples close it let's see uh, truncation lines Google do evil okay we talked about that uh, that's XA to read that's the things I have to read uh, okay XA talk show well, actually there's a uh, there's a case I want to talk about um, I'm not sure I want to talk about that it's it's basically about you know social issues um, Oh, anyway
So I don't know what to talk about. Let's go to um, let's go to Cassandra programming um, blog. Okay, let's see what's in interesting. My programming blog. Uh, so Firefox, you know, Firefox just removed a uh, Shift F2 feature. Basically, Firefox removed the removed this feature called. Um, okay, let's go here. Full page screenshot in browser. So here, here, this page is uh, tells you how to do full page screenshot of a browser page. For example, this page is very long. You know, it's got many pages. You know, it's um, and you want to do a screenshot. You know, creating a big long image. You know, capturing the whole page. Uh, you can do that with browsers. So in Firefox, you just go to um, uh, web dev console command option k let's try it uh, command option k um, uh, let's do that command option k then you just type um, you just type this um, hold on a second let's bring the panel down then you just type colon screenshot dash dash full page then file name, whatever file name you want to save it as. Uh, let's try it. Why not? So you go to uh, console, then screenshot. Okay, dash dash full page, and let's name it EE. -E, okay. Okay, the screenshot is done. Now I can just go to. Um, <laughs> this this is going to be a tr trick. Okay, I create a new um, section, and I just call this command "saw new images." Okay, save it. Now, if I view this in browser, you can see. You see, this is a screenshot. Um, you know, it, it's it's more than one page, but it captured the whole thing. So that's good. You know, that's just an example. Now we don't want actually want it. So open that. Delete it, delete it, delete, delete, delete. Okay. So that's five. That's Firefox screenshot. Now, however, it used to be they have this feature. It's called um, Developer Toolbar, or also known as GLCI. Uh, you know, kind of a toolbar at the bottom. You you can type commands. That feature has been around the, around for like three or four years, and and it's good. You know what happened is that since about ten years ago, browsers start to have features that comes and go. You know, it's you cannot rely on it. You know, this year it's here, next year it's gone. And Firefox used to have like a three D feature where you can see. Your page rendered in 3D. I mean, it's it's hard to um. Uh, let me show you. Firefox. Xali Firefox. 3D feature. I blogged about it. Uh, then. You know, and and then that feature is removed. It's pretty cool though. But I guess nobody uses it. Uh, not this one. You know, yeah, yeah. So you know, the browser it changes every year. You know, or every month. This trend began with Google Chrome about ten years ago. So you know, it just changes, and everything becomes a history. Uh, Firefox 3D View. Yeah, that's called Firefox 3D View. Let's see if I can. You know, so they removed that. They removed it. Uh, okay, I'm trying to find. You know, I'm trying to find my blog, but apparently. Uh, but hopefully, I can show you some pictures. Yeah, it looks like that. You see, <laughs> this this is pretty fancy. 
you know any web page you can go into a 3d view and you can see they uh, you see these stacked up things looks like uh, buildings the the hate I mean each HTML tag creates a hate so when they are high you see them as uh, they are nest nested when when there's many nesting they become higher so that's how it looks you can actually rotate the thing uh, you know it's three-dimensional but they remove that um, you know because they they were trying yeah it, you see it looks like this I like it very much I mean it's very good let's open let's try to uh, yeah they removed it so someone is asking why is it removed uh, so the answer is choose an answer hello 3d view tilt isn't compatible with the multi-process version of Firefox as it stands at the moment if you disable E10 then it will still be available so it says it's not compatible with the multi-process version okay you know sometimes in the past few years Firefox finally switched to the um, multi-process uh, version uh, like multi-process feature what that means is that you it used to be when you when you run an app each app runs one process you know uh, in in programming terms it's one process but beginning but 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 starting with Google Chrome browser they began to have instead of each you know application runs one process you have each tab is one process so you know like this is one process this is one process this is one process and you can see that in activity monitor uh, you see it um, okay process name you see Google Chrome helper I think on the Mac, um, I think these are, you know, these are, you know, each one is a process. That's the, what they call Google Chrome Helper. But on Linux, you can just, uh, you can see, you know, just Google Chrome processes. Uh, let's go to. So I have this Linux tutorial. Uh, you might check out. Uh, Linux basic shell command practical Linux tutorial so you go here and uh, it's a practical Linux tutorial where I show you all the most practical and commonly used commands commands that are used every day you know it's all pure commands you run them on terminal and one of the command is top you know top top and edge top top is the traditional Unix uh, tool to show which process is running so I have a tutorial here but however there's a better uh, better tool uh, which is edge top uh, the major difference is that in edge top you can actually show all processes you know you can page down and page up and show all the processes but with the traditional Unix top uh, uh, tool you can only see uh, the you know the top 20 most CPU heavy processes you cannot see the rest of it there's no page down you know that's why that's why it's it's called top you know it just lets you to let you see you know monitor the top CPU heavy processes uh, so edge top is a better uh, version much uh, improved and it also shows you know the memory usage uh, in a sensible graph sensible way uh, okay you can you can see actually see here you see all these chrome 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 yeah that's that's chrome that's you know because 
each tab is running a process. The reason they want to do that, Chrome started to do that, is because it's supposed to have uh, better security. You know, because different websites, you know, each tab is only one process. If you have a virus on this web page, it won't crash all your other tabs, uh, things like that. So Google, you know, did that. Then Firefox tried to do that, but it's not easy to do because you have to you have to kind of rewrite the whole thing. So it took uh, Firefox several years to do that, and now they I suppose they are doing it. Uh, let's see if I can actually see it in Firefox. Let's let me switch to several browsers and go back here and let's search Firefox. Yeah, so it only shows four. So I actually I'm not sure Firefox is actually using multi processes. So how many people are watching now? Two people. Okay, no, but nobody is watching today. Okay, that's too bad. So today, today is Tuesday. So right now it's like three o'clock. So maybe this time, you know, there are not many people. But also because I just announced it one hour ago. So anyway, I'm using uh, Emacs version uh, twenty six. You can see. Let me do this. Control U, MX version. So you can see I'm using the GNU Emacs 26.2, which is the latest version. They just released this version yesterday, uh, two days ago, actually. But it's not very good, because every now and then you'll see the whole buffer flash. It becomes blank for half a second. Uh, so that's not very good. And also they have, you see my title bar, is like uh, you see this this is a normal title bar you can see a bar there but on this window you don't have that this window you don't have that that's a bug you know it's that's not something I created it's just that every time uh, I have desktop mod on and every time I restart Emacs you know it reopens all the uh, windows you had and uh, they appear like that. So it's so if I can uh, close this window, yeah. So that's a bug. I'm not sure what's the deal. Uh, so what what else to talk about? So I'm looking at yeah. So you know. Um, if you have a question, just type it, okay? Uh, just just type anything, say hi. So I'm looking at my programming um, blog. You know, if, if no one is asking, no one is here, and, you know, no one is, you know, talking, then I'm just going to talk random, you know, about my website and stuff. So this is my website, and, uh, you know, XAR code, this, this is xali.info, okay? You can see the URL at top. And this is my local page. So on this side, I have like close to 4,000 files, HTML files. I've written man manually uh, by hand, you know, with the help of Emacs. But OK, so th there's an interesting thing. Let's show that. So let's go to uh, xali.info. And uh, I added this uh, Chinese chess, playing Chinese chess. Good morning, sound toxin. <laughs> Random talk is fine with me. That's great. Uh, where are you from? Where are you from, uh, sound toxin? What country? So I got this Chinese chess. It's written in JavaScript. I didn't write it, but it's a like a open source somewhere. So you know you can play with computers. So let me try to play it. <laughs> Do you know how to play Chinese chess? So let me let me play a quick game, okay? I'm going to lose for sure. 
Midwest area central line cool uh, uh, central time that's cool so Chinese chess so Chinese chess is basically a variant of chess uh, you know so it, you know it's like you know international chess uh, kind of si similar but 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 it's uh, slightly slightly different you know the the rule uh, you know the but the nature is the same nature and uh, and this is actually one of my most popular pages uh, okay he's coming out good morning Tom Thomas Thomas Wall good morning Wen San Wen San I know you I know you from I think Twitter I think you are my long time follower. So Wen San, are you in Taiwan or, or are you in US? And do you play Chinese? Oh, you you learned it when you were small. So me too. Yeah, I, I learned it when I was a kid, and uh, I I am pretty good at Chinese chess. But however, uh, it's I cannot beat the computer. You know because computer chess computers today they beat any chess champion you know since like 10 years ago uh like for sure almost you know for sure if you play you know 10 games you know the computer will win you know most of the games uh even for world world champions so anyway that's chinese chess you know now and then i play it you know because you know i am used to the game so i play it but um but I always lose. Um, Wen Sen is in Melbourne, Australia. Oh wow, Melbourne is Australia. Followed you on Twitter for a long time. Yeah, that's great. Great to know. Um, so Wen Sen, yeah. I don't remember what's your Twitter uh, handle though. I think it's the same name, but I don't think I've seen you treat uh, for a while so let's see Chinese chess so anyway that's Chinese chess so if you um, you know if you are in into chess you guys might be interested you can you can learn how to play it from Wikipedia you know Wikipedia has has tell you rules so anyway back to my website um, so so what do you guys what what do you guys program uh, programming languages So I I got um, you know so mostly the things on Xardi website is um, programming um, programming stuff technical stuff and math so yeah well let me show you what's what they are so okay there's a chess there's a Unicode Unicode is one of the things I love because you can see okay there are emojis. You know, uh, all sort of emojis, and and then there are symbols. So some toxin says I can't program very much yet, but I like Scheme and Ruby. Those are elegant languages. Uh, and Thomas says I'm learning to program in C sharp. Why C sharp? Okay, so this page is Unicode stars. You can you can see all the Unicode star variations. Uh, so Unicode is very interesting. Let me show you. So there's also cross. You know all these are crosses. You know Unicode they contain all the words characters. And. Uh, and you see many characters they are ancient for example you know you have east syriac cross you have cross of jerusalem you have orthodox cross you have cross of lorraine you have chiro you have dotted cross you have ankh you know so many of these symbols are ancient this ankh for example it's um it's at least i think maybe three thousand years old 
you know, because it's used in e Egyptian. Um, and also th these characters is also its ancient Buddhism uh, symbol. Uh, but you, if you are a Westerner, you may you may not know. But th these are all these actually. Uh, you know, you can see the names. This these two are actually Chinese characters. I mean, you, you know, it may looks like a symbol, but actually, uh, they are Chinese characters. Uh, they are variations of the, you know, it's a Hindu Buddhism symbol. It means, uh, it means like luck, uh, prosperity, you know, along that line. Uh, so, oh yeah, so let me talk about this symbol. This symbol, Ankh, it's, for, it's in uh, heliograph, for example. Let me show you. So here is e Egyptian Herograph, and you can see, you know, e Egyptian hierograph is kind of interesting. It's funny. You have these characters, and you will find that symbol. Uh, you have eyes. You have teeth. You have mouth. You have <laughs> this. <laughs> these, I, I suppose, those are tits. Uh, which is, you know, fundamental and natural, you know, one of the, you know, <laughs> one of the most fundamental, most basic of human animals and all animals. You have to, you know, um, so let's see where can I, I saw that symbol just a few days ago, uh, yesterday. So anyway, so uh, Thomas says, Thomas says my first strongly typed language. Okay, that's C plus. I mean C sharp. And Thomas says I'm not a fan of PHP, but I'm hoping to land a job as a web developer. Oh, that's that's cool. Uh, and Thomas, where are you from? And Thomas is a big fan of Ruby. Yeah, Ruby is very good, elegant. Ruby and scheme. So when when Shan when Shan, let me ask you. So do you have a question for me for Emacs? And Wen Shan, Wen Shan, what are you doing? Like, what do you 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 work as a programmer, right? So anyway, so I have these Unicode pages. They are fascinating. And let's go back to my website, Xali Org. Back to Unicode. Back to Xali dot info. Oh, Thomas is in England. Cool. Winston is doing not JS dev. Cool. Uh, so Xalida info, you have chess, you have Unicode, then you have keyboard. A lot of you know, uh, so I have like few hundred keyboard uh, pages, like reviews and introduction to keyboard, uh, all and a a everything, anything about keyboard. So you have ergonomic keyboards. I give you a list of all the, essentially all the ergonomic keyboards you can buy. If you are a programmer, it's a good investment. You know, you should buy of them, one of them, you know, buy them from my website. 
you know, pick what you want. If you have a question about keyboards, you know, ask me. Um, so you have, you know, ergonomic keyboards, and some people, a lot of people, don't like ergonomic keyboards because usually, almost always, because they don't touch type. If you if you do not touch type, then ergonomic keyboard is really actually not useful to you. I mean, it's actually because you don't touch type, then you know, uh, you know, you, you you wouldn't find ergonomic keyboard uh, advantage advantages you know you, you it's, it's rather useless so a lot of people like PC keyboards so I have a select selection of the best uh, mechanical PC keyboards and many of them are programmable for example this one is programmable vortex race and also this vortex gear cipher and also CM master key and also this one not all of them though uh, and this one too uh, this one Wootin but this one Wootin is very special I think it it's like three hundred dollars <coughs> because uh, it has I mean instead of uh, being just a mechanical keyboard like digital like switch on and off on and off this Wootin keyboard is actually analog mechanical switch Meaning that when you press a key, the key functions almost like a joystick. So it's not just on and off. It's actually like some kind of a continuous uh, signal, you know. So you can, so so it will send a signal when you know, like at what level your key is pressed, you know. So what what is the purpose of that? Well, the point of that is then this keyboard becomes each key uh, becomes uh, like you have fine control for example there are not many applications for this yet but basically you can think of each key as a analog uh, like a joystick you know so so you, there's many uh, signals levels at different levels so for you for example you can kind of use this to uh, drive a car like video game a car or f fly a plane like you know how how fast you go depends on how how much you are holding down a key something like that so th this this is definitely a new technology so I think it's already on sale I'm not sure you might check uh, the website where to buy the wooden keyboard let's see Oh, it's it's eight a.m. in uh, Australia. Cool. So Thomas says I use a USB touch screen keyboard I bought from Japan. A USB touch screen keyboard? That's interesting. Really? For programming, that would be. <laughs> I cannot imagine that would be good. A touch screen keyboard. I mean, is a screen like a glass? Yeah, I cannot imagine. You know, using a one of those touch screen keyboards. It's uh, like, do you have a name or a picture or something you can show us? So anyway, there's a wooden keyboard. Okay, pre-order now. Apparently, it's not for prime time yet. So anyway. So, so let's go back to my keyboard page. Yeah, so I got PC keyboard reviews. Then, then I got some uh, lots of articles about keyboard design. For example, for example, keyboard design. For example, you might wonder how you know the arrangement of keys like on your keyboard you have Q W E R and A S D F and so on you know where does that came from why do they arrange it that way so I have explanations for that here you know um, and lots of other things you know for example why why are the keys slanted you know or sometimes it's called staggered oops 
you know, like like these staggered. Uh, why? Because actually, because from mechanical typewriters, you see the bars underneath. They need to keep those bars uh, aligned and straight. That's why the keys be become slanted in a strange way, in in a rather irregular way, because you can see it's not it's not exactly diagonal, and it's you know you know it's from top right to lower, uh, top left to lower right. You know all kind of weird things going on with the keyboard, and that's the history of it. And why, for example, why is the spacebar so huge? Well, that is because one day, you know, the typewriters, <laughs> the mechanical typewriters here, here is okay. Typewriter spacebar history. Uh, here is a history, uh, and this is, this is from a book. Uh, and uh, I was told of this story by uh, by this guy. Let me show you uh, by Marcin Wykery. Marcin Wykery. Okay, he he's a he's a keyboard history uh, keyboard historian. Okay, he's he's writing a book on keyboard. I'm not sure it's out or not yet. But anyway, so here's a page about why the te the space bar is huge. Actually, you don't need it. You know, you don't really need that huge a space bar. It, it it's it's that way just because one day, you know, you know, one of the guys who who you know the people who are making typewriters just thought of it. You know, hey hey, why not? You know, let's make it you know wide so maybe it's more convenient and and. Then oh yeah let's let's try it and you know then it's just there and it's stuck. So uh, so this Japanese uh, keyboard, touch screen keyboard is called Cool Leaf. So let's see if we can find it. Cool Leaf keyboard. Uh, let's search images. Oh, that's interesting. So we got this touch screen keyboard from Japan. <laughs> I cannot possibly imagine that uh, you're gonna be typing on this and you like it. This so this is actually this is your main keyboard. Oh, it's it's basically just a, like a glass, and uh, to me, I feel that it would be the most painful to type, because because you don't get you know the tactile sensation. You don't have any yield, like you are just touching glass all day. So how much is it though? Okay, you don't always use it. It's quite interesting, though. So I'm going to look into it. Uh, yeah, cool. You know this interesting keyboard. So let's go back to my keyboard page. Yeah. So here is a typewriter spacebar history. There is no like rational. Yeah. Like sometimes when you look at things almost anything you know like the why the keyboard is the way they are why we have the caps lock key you know why if, anything if you just look at, at in detail and think of why uh they oftentimes they have you know a history but usually i mean we we might think we we usually think you know there must be a logical or rational reason like someone think you know for some reason then they decided to design it that way because of something something uh, you should, but often that's not the case you the way things are often depending on what things but anyway for keyboards 
a lot of things just they they don't have like a rational reason it's like not for good reason so the reason that the space bar is really long is not because you know people have you know tried all possible ways and turns out you know long space bar is good no it just so happens that someone designed it that way and uh, the brand is popular you know it's like used by everyone and everyone just get used to it we just got people just got used to it and when they when people see a new keyboard you know with a small space bar they don't like it because there's a habit you know you are you already are used to the long space bar so so one day you see a short space bar you you might your reaction would be this is strange you know this is strange you know you don't want it because <laughs> yeah that's 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 what happens to lots of things so oftentimes it, similarly to programming languages you know like there are people who studied programming languages you know the history usually you know it's the programmers who refuse innovation like if we look at the programming languages in the past you know five years you know c and lisp and you know fortran and whatever there are a lot you know you don't hear about them you know it's apr and you know all the programming histories we can see a progress you know from assembly language to higher level language to to you know machine language assembly language fortran cobol c lisp you know um fourth you know and and apl and uh, you know and so on if you look at them you can see progress you know today like today we have pearl you know th there was pearl then there's python ruby then we have golan you know uh for example for the for the c c we have c c plus plus java c sharp and d you know c c c plus plus d java c sharp right it's kind of like a progression and we have golan and we have rust these these are all kind of like low level c kind of family anyways so, so there are many of them you know there's scripting languages there's um lua you know lua python and uh, julia and so on and you can kind of see progress because many features we don't have before and we have today for example Lam lambda is one of the thing uh and closure you know is also another feature and also automatic memory management and, and many you know almost every feature you can see is over the years then gradually almost all programming languages uh, have those features but however if you look back in history usually it's a case that when that feature is in introduced the programmers at the time they they reject it like they don't want it they think it's stupid <laughs> it's like this happens decade after decade it's almost almost like that so you know today we take things for granted absolutely you know why you know we, we might think some pro programming feature in every language we to to us it seems obvious you know obvious we obviously we sh we should have that but if you look back then when that feature is introduced the programmers at the time they they are almost saying like no that's the most stupid feature we don't want that why is that it's because of habit so in the same way today there are lots of new things we refuse like today we we as programmers we think you know that's stupid <laughs> but actually uh it's it's only because we are not used to it because we are used to whatever you know programming languages we have today we are accustomed to it so uh so sound toxin says i got to borrow an ergodox keyboard for a couple of months and i liked that the keys were in a grid instead of a staggered layout yeah that's what I use you know I showed my keyboard many times in the past let's see you know so I'm using truly ergonomic keyboard you know so the keys are all um, straight uh, you see 
it's straight up down you know up down it's, it's like there's a line uh, so and it's it's like that it's curved you know it's like a <laughs> it's like a it's like a bowl you know so I, I my fingers rest on it and I think that's my favorite keyboard now I mean you can see on my website so anyway back on this website page you can see many of the old typewriters they used to have different space bars that's not just bar you see this one doesn't even you see this this keyboard the space bar is just one single key over here uh, so that's the history of the space bar uh, and this one this fun funky one <laughs> and look and look at this one the space bar is the these two things on the side uh, I think they are uh, yeah space <laughs> space um, you know so so my keyboard now is this Ergodox so you you might uh, check it out uh, so so Thomas says have you came across crystal programming language yeah I haven't looked into it though I think it's good but uh, you, you know there are so many languages today crystal language uh, I think it's supposed to be it's based on Ruby so it has the same syntax as Ruby but it has the speed of C so it's kind of a modern version uh, of Ruby uh, you might say you know so yeah crystal I think it's good you know as far as programming language language goes you know I basically uh, every 10 years you know for each decade the newer the better in general you know there's no doubt about that because that's you know because that's called progress you know because you know programming that kind of applies to any technology as far as long as it's a technology it's technology then usually the newer the better you know so crystal so I mean there are so many languages it's today it's not like you know 20 years ago uh, so so today there are so many languages new ones it's like you you cannot you don't have the time to learn all of them you know all of them are very good I mean I I suppose you know I'm guessing crystal you know it's very good it has you know Ruby syntax and as fast as C it's very good so Golang is good Julia is good um, you know a, a lot a lot of them actually I have an article let's see proliferation of programming languages proliferation of computing languages so on this page I list you know many new languages this is written in 2008 and I began to update them but I can't kind of stopped because there's just too many languages you know you, you don't even have time to add them to add to the list okay so there's pure P pure is a, a pattern matching language um, let's see if they are still around they used to have a uh, Wikipedia page but it got deleted a while back let's see if it's still on oh it's still there okay so you got this pure um, so this is the repository for oh wait the repository is gone <laughs> I guess they must have moved away from Bitbucket uh, yeah must be so anyway I, I got a list of lots of languages here Julia Ometa Ometa is a old one Elm so anyway so any anything else uh, I think that's it for today 
I kind of, you know, one hour, okay, so, you know, I kind of just random, uh, Swift is from Apple, Hack Land is from Facebook, Egerson, oh, Egerson is a pattern matching language, I forgot about it. Hackland. I don't actually. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know anything about Hackland. Hackland is you know, you know PHP is designed. Uh, you know PHP is extremely popular. You know back in two thousands, it's the most popular language basically, or the top three. You know if you count C, C plus uh, plus, PHP, Java that's the most popular but PHP is still one of the most popular among top five you know it's used everywhere it's uh, Wikipedia is written in PHP Facebook is written in PHP um, so um, so you know so Facebook you know but PHP is a compile I mean it's a it's it's not a fast language so but P, but Facebook becomes huge you know, becomes one of the most powerful, you know, uh, and popular website. So they they have the money. So they basically they cre they create they want to improve PHP, improve improve the speed. So they created this hackland back in um, I think back in even two thousand nine. I forgot what's the date they created it back then 2010 something like that uh, but I haven't heard of it much you know basically P hackland is just like PHP it's basically PHP uh, with optional type system and type inference uh, but I never actually uh, looked into it I, I programmed in PHP for like for a few years and I read the PHP documentation uh, almost cover by cover to cover. Uh, you know, anyway, Hackland. Yeah, I don't know much about Hackland. Why, why are you, um, let's see, are you interested to, uh, yeah, as P, uh, type into PHP. So you, you program PHP Yeah, so and I, you know, it seems I don't hear people talking about Hackland much. Uh, yeah, but also since then, uh, PHP, as far as I know, the, it, it has also improved a lot. I mean, a new compiler has came out, you know, the compi compiler has been rewritten again, you know, it's been rewritten several times, you know, every few years, you know, we as we know more compiler technology. So I mean, PHP is very popular, right? So a lot of people, companies have the resources, you know, they, so they, they uh, write a better compiler every few years. So last I heard, it's, you know, it's very, you know, it's very good. You know, some of these languages, uh, it, it it's very good today. I, I that's what I heard. Uh, yeah, the the problem with PHP is you know the naming is inconsistent. <laughs> Oh, flow type. Okay, so Winston says I'm doing. Winston says I'm doing JavaScript, and there is flow type from Facebook, which I think might be a similar thing as what Hackland to PHP. So flow type, how how is that? Let's uh let's search flow type. Let's see. A static type checker for JavaScript. Oh, uh, 
I'm not sure about that because because you know there's a TypeScript right have you used TypeScript I'm using TypeScript uh, it's pretty good but um, so flow is a static type checker for JavaScript yeah type checker <laughs> I, I don't I'm, I'm not sure I like it yeah it's a type checker so so basically I sub I suppose it adds types to JavaScript and it compiles to JavaScript I mean that's what TypeScript do I mean that's what TypeScript does and as far as that goes types TypeScript is pretty good but overall it's no good because because JavaScript I talked about this in in one of the videos you know last week or so JavaScript the syntax is extremely complicated okay because JavaScript is you know a language that's uh, designed and uh, written implemented in 10 days 10 days you know <laughs> the whole thing design and implementation the whole thing is created in 10 days so there's a lot of problems and over the past 20 years they changed lots of things but however they made they tried to make it uh, backward compatible so all the bad things in JavaScript is still there so today the JavaScript you know you have this extremely messy you know basically it's an extremely messy language the syntax is fairly complicated so given that then you have TypeScript which is 100% compatible with JavaScript except that they added uh, types you know static optional types you can add it if you want so you know so it's supposed to help programmers but anyway so what so what you got is this extremely complicated syntax plus more even more complicated syntax for the type you know for you know the type annotation syntax so it's it's not good I mean and and also if you code in TypeScript you know I have a you know for example let me show you my TypeScript uh, go to xali.info xadro uh, index open that uh, okay copy that so I go here you can see this this is my uh, project to draw uh, to draw curves these are Java this these are JavaScript TypeScript and you can see the code um, you can see the code here this this one so it's all TypeScript uh, and uh, you know so you can see for example this is a function and these are type annotations this is you know so anyway TypeScript, you know, you got this complicated syntax, inconsistent, and then it compiles to JavaScript, so it adds more complications. You know, it's not a, it's, it's not a bad add-on as far as add-on goes, but compared to, for example, Golang or Julia or even say Crystal or Nim, you know, some of the new languages it's it's no good because you have you have so many so much complications you know you compile you add types you compile to JavaScript and JavaScript is like 30 years old a pile a pile of you know bags baggages you know um, so you know so compared to the newer languages like completely new Golang Swift uh, maybe Hackland elixir uh, you know many of name also name you know many of these you know if you compare to them then the TypeScript is <laughs> plus JavaScript is not good
Oh, uh, Winston says flow. Uh, flow does not compile. Um, building it just strips off or typing annotations. Okay. Yeah, still, you know, I don't like those, you know, <laughs> like today's language is today's today's development, especially in the JavaScript front end, you know, the the thing becomes extremely complicated because you have the you have so many tools like NPM, you have like 100 libraries, you download one, one library, that library uses, you know, 100 other libraries, you have in dependencies, you know, then you have the config files, then you have the transpilers, you know, JavaScript ES 2015 transpilers, and you have, you know, a bunch of crap. <laughs> so then you have tools to to dynamically update your page, and, and then, then you have tools to combine libraries and stuff. So it's one huge bag of mess. Then, okay, then you have, you know, the TypeScript, which compares to JavaScript, then you have you need to use Babler or whatever, or maybe you use Flow. Then um, so this whole baggage, you know. So so then you have then you have the build step. Like when you build, you run the tool. Then it, the tool runs a bunch of libraries, you know, complicated things to combine libraries or whatever. <laughs> then you have to deploy you know it's it's fairly you know, it's it's pretty bad it's a mess you know as compared to um in the old days for example python you write a program you just write it or you know even um anyways um javascript is our high our high um so Thomas says JavaScript is how I got into programming. I, I always thought it was very minimal. Uh, JavaScript is not really minimal. I mean, <laughs> depending on what you mean, of course, I can see what you know what you mean by minimal. You know, JavaScript. You know, if you compare the language, okay, JavaScript, the language, you know, just the language itself. It's pretty small, but it's not really minimal because when you compare to Ruby, or uh, what, well, well, when you compare compare to Scheme, for example, Scheme is, you know, actually the the really truly minimal language. Uh, but JavaScript, you know, you don't have lots of libraries built in, so you actually need all the libraries, you know, uh, elsewhere. Um, Hey, good morning, Isaac. You are late. You are one hour late. Actually, I think we are done today. Um, you know, uh, seventy minutes. So, what's up, Isaac? Anything? Anything interesting? Anything else? So, I've been talking for one hour. You know, it's uh, kind of <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I think I'm gonna shut down. So I talked about, I didn't talk much about much today. I kind of just random, you know, the random stuff. You just finished class, okay. Okay, have a good day, guys. I hope to see you next time. Bye.